Hey, beautiful people. My name's Kristen. Thank you for stopping by to see, did I make it through the Chunky Monkey books of October? Let's see. <laughs> so the short answer is I, I really was a little nervous if I would be able to read what I had TBR'd in October, but I was ambitious and decided I was going to go for it. And the short answer is I at least read some or attempted everything I read and I read most of it. So I did read A Radical Act of Free Magic by H.D. Perry. I loved it. This may easily be the favorite book that I have read all year. I did a separate review of it. I will leave it in the description below if you are interested, but it is basically historical fiction of European uh, French English battles over time with a magical element kind of like Harry Potter there's the normal world but then the magical realm is laid on top of it then I have been reading Tales of Terror and Other Supernatural by Wilkie Collins I am almost halfway done with this and this is kind of my ending book I will finish this by the end of Halloween so really, really appreciate Wilkie Collins. This is actual literal ghosts, and he tells it in a way that is very Twilight Zone, kind of like then the apparition came out and pointed its finger, you know, identifying the murderer, you know, that kind of thing, like not gruesome, not morbid, not scary, just kind of like creepy and, and supernatural. So that's totally my, that's my speed, y'all. Now, I am going to give a little caveat to this ch chapter house, Dune. I read the introduction to this and I decided I am going to put this aside for about a year until I finish my Wheel of Time and this is, this is just changed, I mean it's th over 3,000 years in the future from the original Dune. And it is just getting further and further away from the original story. And I appreciate a lot about it, but I am not into this particular trilogy the way I was the first one. And I don't wanna just force myself to read it. I decided this would be better for me to revisit in the future than to end up DMFing it because it's the wrong time to be reading it. And it does have actually some similarities even to Wheel of Time, but then way more sci-fi. So I am going to put my Dune series on hold for a while. So I technically did not read that book that I was going to read, but I did add another one in that I didn't tell y'all about. So we're gonna, we're gonna pretend like I accomplished my whole TBR. I did read David Copperfield, y'all. This is my report of my Charles Dickens. Um, I did kind of, I tried to be gentle, but you can see I did do a little wear and tear on my Penguin Cloth Bound Classic, but that's okay. It means that I lived into it and I loved it. Um, I did appreciate this and like it. I would say it's about a three star, except for the fact that he is just so fluffy in what he wants to say and the middle was particularly boring and I thought about DNFing it and for that reason I think it's going to end up more like a two and a half star and I'm just going to say in confession I don't think Charles Dickens is for me y'all. I feel really kind of sad about it. I did really like the ending. I like the story of David Copperfield. It starts out basically from the very beginning of his life. He's named after his father who passes fairly early and then his mom remarries and that is a kind of the evil stepfather. He has the whole boarding school thing going on. He ends up with an aunt. He has all these adventures, all these love interests these friends that come back from the past and are faithful and go through all these adventures. There is a really funny element to that he gets involved into businesses. And so there's a very corrupt kind of evil villain character named Heap. And <laughs> Charles Dickens is really funny because he uses the name itself as almost a swear word. It's like Heap, Heap, you know? And so that was, that was really, entertaining and, and cute. And so there is a lot of goodness here that I appreciated. I'm not sad that I read this like 900 page tomb, 
but I I don't see myself reading Dickens any further. I think that is enough Dickens for me. <laughs> so we'll go with that. We'll go with that. Now, another interesting, fascinating thing. I read book nine in Robert Jordan's Wheel of Time. This is Winner's Heart. And this is where the majority of people who read Wheel of Time say the slog is, is eight, nine, 10, and you just have to push through it and then it gets better again. And so this is book nine. I love this, y'all. I Okay, so the this one, there's like five main characters that leave the original uh, two rivers to go on this quest to kind of balance the universe. And one of them is the Dragon Reborn, but they don't know at the beginning which one it is. And so one of those five characters is, generally speaking, everybody's least favorite, Matt. I love him. He's like my favorite one. And this story has a lot of Matt. And the Dragon Reborn ends up having like three different love interests. And so I don't really think I like that, but instead of just talking about it endlessly and what these women are going to do when they find out about each other or how they're going to interact or how they're going to manage this whole thing or what's going to go down, this is the book that actually they all came together, talked about it, dealt with it, and I at least enjoyed the fact that it was addressed. So I totally like this. This is totally up there, you know, four, four and a half stars. This is almost five star for me, y'all. And most people call it the slog. So just thought I'd share. Don't be intimidated by Wheel of Time. If you want to read it, there's gonna be, it is so epic. There are gonna be parts that you absolutely love and they're gonna help you through the parts that you don't and it's gonna be different for every single person. So just some encouragement on Wheel of Time. Speaking of time, Time Traveler's Wife. This is another fairly big one that I made it through. This is a story of a boy who has a weird ability, affliction, whatever you wanna call it, that without his control, he gets transported forwards and backwards within his life and then he has to acclimate himself, figure it out. He always comes into the new time naked and not afraid, not naked and afraid, <laughs> but naked and trying to figure out when he is. I mean, he doesn't know anything. He has to figure out, you know, not who he is, but where he is in time. And then because he knows who he ends up married to and having a relationship with at parts where he is sent into the past. She's a child and so he respects that. It It's not overly kind of creepy, but there's this kind of awareness that she has this sense of time right from the beginning and understanding of it. And so she starts helping him even from an early age. And so it's just this epic journey. And the fun part is that at the beginning of each little section, it tells you, you know, the ages and then you're trying to remember, oh, this happened, that, because it's all out of order. And so you get to piece it together and figure out kind of the butterfly effect, what was happening, what was going to happen, how did that affect that, was that part of that, or was that destined to happen, and just thinking about those circles of time, which I love. So I love this book. Loved it, loved it. So then my nonfiction that I read for the month was Nala's World. I was on vacation. I thought what better thing to read on vacation than a journeying cat that is seeing the world. So this is the story of Dean Nicholson. He is a bicyclist cycling all over and he comes across a stray cat that needs his help and adopts her and she starts traveling the world with him. He gets a lot of attention, becomes an influencer even because of this attention and just the fun adventures, get to learn about some new historic places. It's it, If you're a cat person, a cyclist, or you like travel memoirs, this is a really well-written book that's a lot of fun. So have that. The book I added to my TBR that I didn't know I was gonna be reading, I went ahead and picked up Killers of the Flower Moon. I have not seen the movie, but I really wanna see the movie. This is the story of the Osage um, murders and the birth of the FBI. So this is the time where you have Native Americans 
predominantly in the Oklahoma area. And what ended up happening is they had been kind of clustered and pushed into this area and then oil was discovered. So they became the richest, wealthiest people in general. And then you have the prejudice against the Native Americans. And so you have all kinds of things that are going on and then they start dying mysteriously and sometimes overtly. And so then they have to start looking for ways to do justice, right? Looking for ways to try to set this straight. And so it is really, really well written, really well told. I look forward to going and seeing this movie. Have you seen this movie? Have you read the book? Did you read the book first or are you interested in reading the book second? I would be curious to know. So y'all, I made it through. That, that, was, that was a lot. Oh, I read uh, audiobook too, The House of Seven Gables by Nathaniel Hawthorne which was also an outstanding classic. More people should talk about this. It is perfect for October. It is a spooky vibe. So you have this house that has the, obviously seven gables, but it's on land that was kind of gotten underhandedly. And the thing is that it's now cursed. There's ghosts and there are bad mojo vibes between the families and it's weird and creepy the way they interact and they keep on intersecting one another the like main chunk of the middle of the book really reads like a traditional classic with high society people and you've got an old stodgy widow that is living in the house and then a young woman kind of relative comes into the house, brings all of this life and vibrancy. There's drama because she had a, another renter who was kind of lodging, paying, helping her pay some bills, doing some gardening for her. And of course, a romance ensues. There's all kinds of those normal, traditional, classic things happening. But then there's this undertone that I just loved that was deeper about it with this kind of more supernatural kind of element. And I just found it a lot of fun. It is not action packed. It is not high drama in the sense of fast movie. But if you like that kind of classic slow burn, if you are a fan of Scarlet Letter, I highly recommend The House of Seven Gables. I wish I wish it was out there more. So now that is everything that I read in October, a lot. So I am so thankful and grateful that I had these great reads. I hope that my telling you about them maybe inspires you or put something on the radar for you that you didn't currently have there. Have you read any of them? What do you think of them? If you can drop me a comment below, I really appreciate it. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe. It really helps my channel and I appreciate that. Thank you for stopping by. Happy reading y'all.